Welcome to the Business of Cannabis podcast. I am your guest host today, Michael Zaitsev, Academic Director of Business of Cannabis degree programs at LIM College. And I'm here today with Sloan Barber, the CEO and founder of Engine. He's one of the most popular guys in the cannabis industry because he's getting everyone jobs in the cannabis industry. Sloan, welcome. Tell us about Engine and uh, yeah, give, give us a proper intro if you don't mind. That was a great intro, <clears throat> Michael. I appreciate it very much. It's good to see you, as always. Um, yeah, so I am the founder and CEO of Engine, and uh, I started this company with my colleague and co-founder, Valerie, and she's our CTO, and um, is got an incredible background in HR technology and other uh, overall sort of tech and startup related um, companies that she's helped scale from a tech perspective. And I came from the tech recruiting and HR technology space uh, before joining cannabis in 2019. And um, just saw an opportunity early on and uh, found a great person to start it with. And we want to bring a real true recruitment marketing software and HR technology software to cannabis companies to help them uh, build a great employer brand, uh, intelligently distribute all their jobs to the right people in the right place at the right time, and then have a suite of tools and software that they can have their teams use to power their company's hiring and be the cannabis hiring mission control. Um, so we're really lucky to have a, an incredible team and to have been working in this industry uh, and excited for what's next and for our little chat here because a lot going on in New York City. Oh yes, and and beyond, and the whole state is buzzing. But I wanna I wanna ask you before we go to New York, I wanna ask you more about Engine and tell us more about you know when did you get started with the company, some of the accomplishments and achievements, and some exciting news. Put me, on, me, put me on the spot, Michael. Um, so that's why they pay me the big bucks. You know? <laughs> oh, you're getting paid for this? No, not at all. <laughs> I was gonna say, damn. <laughs> Uh, I gotta pick up uh, pick up some co-hosting gigs uh, <laughs> while we're still building this. No, um, it's a good question. So you know, when I got into cannabis, I started um, working at a company called Flower Hire, which is recruitment, uh, executive search, and HR advisory. Uh, really focused on six-figure cannabis jobs, working hand in glove, if you will, with with customers of all sizes, but really you know high growth mid market and, and enterprise companies. And I was chief revenue officer at that company. Um, and we sort of helped that team scale uh, from five to about 25 people across every state now, pretty much that has adult use cannabis in the country. Um, thousand plus placements of you know VPs and C-level and director level types across the country. And one of the first things that I identified having come from uh, an HR technology company called Hired where uh, we were basically matching tech talent and it was done in an incredibly automated, very sort of uh, powerful self-service way that customers loved. And uh, after doing that for several years, I started to see that opportunity in the cannabis industry, which was really centered around the hourly and frontline workers in this developing workforce. And it's a very unique problem because you can give companies incredible service like Flower Hire does to help them fill six-figure jobs and to really help with HR strategy. But 80 to 90 percent of your employees if you're a large-scale cannabis producer are hourly workers mm. you know and and the frontline management leadership and this is the really the engine of the company right i see what you did there right <laughs> so you know you need to uh you know kind of build this engine and the, the better it runs and the better you take care of your people and the better people you can find and the way in which you can actually communicate the value of working not only for your company but working in cannabis and that's not an easy thing to do when you're also dealing with the challenges that all cannabis operators deal with right um turns out it's not all rainbows and butterflies so that's a, which is unfortunate because <laughs> otherwise you'd be getting paid for this that's, thing, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> but you know, this this conversation is payment enough. You know, opportunity. You're good. Sit down with great people like you and, and hear about the latest and greatest happenings in the business of cannabis. And so, so tell me, 
you, you, you went from flower hire to engine, started engine. Yeah. Saw yeah. this, this huge need in the marketplace and have done a lot of great work to address it. And now, you know, here we are in New York City where we're expecting, you know, conservatively 50, 60,000 plus jobs in the next couple of years. And, you know, that's a big, a big opportunity, a big challenge ahead of you and your team. How are you gearing up for that? And what do you anticipate that, you know, the workforce development process and absolutely, and like? absolutely, you're standing up a, a um, the largest global cannabis market in my opinion right. from not only just pure size but also impact, uh, and you're doing it uh, under the uh, framework of you know a social uh, justice and criminal justice reform bill um, with strong equity provisions, which is incredibly uh, progressive, exciting, interesting challenging but the but the opportunity of thread the needle and making that work is really exciting and when i started to really get engine off the ground in 2020 and 2021 with valerie we hired a team what i was here in new york i've been here for 12 13 years um and it just it was very evident to me you know when you look at new york city the amount of just people there are everywhere right and these these hospitality facilities obviously bars and restaurants and what you know will in ten years from now be hopefully a very vibrant, culturally relevant cannabis industry with various different types of hospitality, uh, you know, different dispensary concepts, a massive delivery network which already exists, which you could flip a switch and you would have a seamless legal cannabis delivery in the state of New York. Right. And there's a petition out to do just that. But these, the point is. These are all people that need to have get jobs, find the right jobs in this space, and it's all kind of materializing around them, and no one really knows where they fit. Mm. And you could see that with the conversation that the team at Flower Hire was having was very focused on that. But that doesn't scale when you have you know your focus on those types of jobs. Uh, but you still need to help what in New York will be sixty to eighty thousand people, according to the state's own estimates, over the next three to four years, get a job in an industry that wants to build a diverse you know, equitable, profitable, and sustainable industry. That's basically not been done before at that sort of speed, scale, and also like with the provisions that are necessary. So we believe that technology products like Engine for companies that helps them hire smarter, you know, recruit faster and easier and then retain longer, paired with a job seeker uh, experience that was built really with only the job seeker in mind, um, we could have two sides of this coin and help make these connections more seamless. And so we actually launched careersincannabis.com, you know, specifically for the job seeker to help achieve this, that. And it's sort of the opposite side of the engine platform. It's where job seekers can build resumes and get content, get access to partners, classes like we've talked about, and education. Um, and through our partners with Greenflower and the GFI Institute, there's a lot of different ways um, that a job seeker can benefit. But you need to make that accessible. Mm. So it has to be completely digital, incredibly lightweight, and very much like with, with an aim to educate and support help over time. And that is, I think, when you look at New York and other emerging states, sort of in a way the missing link that is really necessary to mm. get everything to happen in the way that I think people all kind of universally want it to, having talked to hundreds and hundreds or even thousands of cannabis people over the last several years. You know, when you're recruiting, you learn a lot about right. people in the industry. People generally share the same vision. They want it to be done right. They want it to be done sustainably, equitably, but they want to make money. Right. They have to make money. Like, this is the whole point. This is why this exists at the end of the day. But who, how is that money distributed? Who gets to take advantage of the opportunity? Who gets left behind? And I believe that employment, gainful employment, good jobs with good pay, and good career trajectory can be created in this industry and can be the biggest path to equity far more than licensure. Mm. In, the, in the near term. Because you have to know what you're getting into and this industry has a long way to go before we're able to give someone the keys to a Ferrari. <laughs> right. The, you gotta, like I said, you gotta build the engine. 
the most important piece. Absolutely. And well, you know, it's, that's amazing. I was going to ask you, you know, for years I've got the question, I want a job in cannabis. I want to work in the industry. Where do I start? How do I begin? And I would always shamelessly plug my own book, The Cannabis Business Book, which is on Amazon.com. But now it sounds like the answer is you go to careersincannabis.com and you have a great starting point. It's a good starting point, you know, and it's getting better every day and we're working hard on it. Um, there is there is a lot to be done in that department of what is the on-ramp, mm. right? And, and you talk to people about their stories and it's always completely unique, which is part of the charm and the authenticity that you get with the people that work in cannabis. But um, this is a real hard job yeah. and it's a hard industry to work in. It's very unpredictable and, and, and the regulators and the policymakers at both state and federal levels, in certain cases, sort of are trying really hard to figure stuff out too. And um, no one knows what they're doing. You know, really, there's no answer here. It's never been done before, a lot of this stuff. And so you have to work within the confines of chaos mm. um, and really thrive in that. So, you know, people who find themselves as like adventurous and adventure seeking, you know, generally will thrive in, in a chaotic opportunity. So you, there's ways in which you can kind of evaluate which part of the industry is good for you, whether it's on the ancillary side, which is a great spot to work where I work, um, where you get to support the plant touching operators. And then there's people who just want the purity of working directly with the plant. And so each role has the right kind of mix of skills and experience that makes sense and we the more we can work with partners and other people in the industry whether that's you know you guys or the team at flower hire or some of the local colleges and universities or the partners like green flower that power some of the colleges and universities you can get out into the community and then you can also and really importantly build networks and connections at the same time into legacy communities mm -hmm and communities where people don't have a resume if they've been working in an unlicensed cannabis market for the past five years. Right. But they could have a great product, or uh, usually do in my experience, and also have an incredible network of customers and employees that are have a good job. So you have to make sure that the reach goes everywhere so that you can bring people in through multiple different channels and sources and then match them with the best job and the best company, the best sort of time for them in a way that is completely accessible. Um, and obviously mobile sort of chat based interfaces and some of the new stuff that's happening in AI is all very, very interesting um, to us and to every business. And if you're not looking at it, you know, you should be. but there are really unique opportunities to help leverage this power to educate people on you know emerging industries like cannabis and to you know help them who maybe have never worked with a recruiter before right but but what if there was you know something that really could kind of capture the hearts and minds and be a great place for people to start looking into the cannabis industry we'll see maybe something like that's in the works Hmm, okay, all right, well, I won't, I won't, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I should dig into that or not. Probably not. Probably not. I probably right? said too much already. <laughs> all right. Well, we may I, have to cut that. I, I don't, we'll see. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to <laughs> knock on my door in the middle of the night with the, uh, you know. The I know where you live, Mike. <laughs> Uh-oh. But uh, let me ask you this, Sloan, what are you most excited about for... I love that question. Yeah. I ask people that question all the time. Um, I am I am actually most excited about the New York market. It's I, I live here, you know. I've been here. I've been involved. You know, I was lucky enough to to meet up with some friends who were also in the industry, getting into the industry in 2018, 2019. Started an organization called the Cannabis Collective, which is you know executive group um, that's really focused on New York City, New York State. And so I've been to dinners and. and events and just done drinks and just gotten to build this network of amazing people. Uh, and this is happening in real time. It's happening. Uh, and it's happening in the, one of the biggest cities in the world with one of the most sort of prominent cannabis ecosystems that uh, is really just waiting to kind of 
come up and uh, you see it here. I mean, people are excited, right? Uh, coming to work and roll in, a, in an amazing spot like this that's like very community driven and is also like the beating heart of this industry that's just getting started. So I'm really excited about New York. And then, you know, I think New York, uh, where New York goes, so does the work, right? Like I think it truly is the beginning of a global cannabis industry. And I think New York and the regs in New York and the way that New York is trying to thread this needle is probably a model that the federal government looks really hard at to determine how the next phase happens, you know, or uh, we're all, you know, infected with cordyceps mushrooms and shooting down zombies, you know, 10 years from now. <laughs> and uh, that's the world we're living in, right? I've been watching Last of Us, so like, I'm I, I figured that's very awesome. much like, oh man, I don't know, that seems like it could definitely happen. Um, but I kind of feel the same way about cannabis. It's like, yeah, I mean, that could, it could definitely happen in the way we're in New York, 10 years from now is a five to seven billion dollar cannabis market with tourism and events and hospitality and cannabis beverage bars and Amsterdam style coffee shops and you know concerts with you know cannabis available and really strong safety and education and workforce development and like all these things that the pendulum swings towards the middle as we see with prohibition of alcohol as we've seen in other states this is not completely new from a fundamentals perspective. Mm. And we know when you balance the getting people into the legal market with working with illicit operators to incent them to get into the legal market, because that's the only way it happens. Right. And they got to see other people that they know, like, yeah, I'm making more money doing it legally. And it's just, right. you know, I'm part of this bigger thing and I got all this support. You should do this. And then people do it. Right. But if you're in California, no one's saying that. Right. And we know why, right? We know why taxation didn't work in certain areas. We know why certain licensing caps or limits or, 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 or openness or municipal regulations didn't work. And so we do have a roadmap, and I think that's what excites me about New York and the future of this state is that I think New York might not always get it right the first time, but they also never get up. So the first time is never the only time. You answered my next question, which I was going to ask you. What is, if we get this thing right, what does it look like? When you talk through that in a pretty clear and compelling way. So I'm going to ask you okay. one, one of my new favorite questions. As someone who's been in the space for a while and clearly very passionate and educated about not only you know your particular focus of careers and workforce and all that stuff, but I feel like you have a really good view of the whole industry and probably all that time you spent in the tech world and seeing the whole entrepreneurial, you know, nature of this industry, because it is a startup industry in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm yeah. curious ways that count. what is, what's a recent aha moment that you've had in cannabis? Uh, wow. I asked my students the same question. You know, week, you know, so. I don't know if it's an aha moment, but one of the things that I do witness in cannabis is people want to be here. Mm. Um, and they want to figure out ways <clears throat> to make it work, to make their job easier, to make their job... Like, everyone is also kind of like in a job that might be unstable or that's unpredictable or that's certainly not forever right. in cannabis and a lot of companies are you know rising and falling right there are definitely pockets of growth yeah. new york is one of them new jersey missouri new mexico and there are pockets of consolidation and just retraction california oregon colorado etc this is a phase it's 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 one of these things that has happened before will happen again and will happen to New York in some way, shape, or form. I witness incredible resilience. Mm. And it's not so much an aha moment as if I haven't seen it before, but it's just shocking to me how persistent it is. And I that's what makes me believe that working with people in this industry to create a great industry to work in is a really great mission and I'm just happy to be a part of it. 
Amazing. Fantastic. Well, I want to thank you for your time, but before I let you go, where can people go to get more familiar with Engine, the great work you're doing, careers in cannabis? Then go on the web, the World Wide Web. <laughs> um, and we have a website. Uh, so it's E N G I N, no E at the end. It's a little more French. Valerie, my co founder, is from France. Um, so it's E N G I N dot C O. And then if you're looking more on job seeker stuff and want to just learn about the industry, careersincannabis.com. And then I'm on LinkedIn. Maybe you are too. Sloan Barber, S L O A N E B A R B O U R. Find me there. Excellent, excellent. Spelling skills. Yeah, spelling. I've done it a few times before that. <laughs> before I practiced before the show. Let me, let me ask you one last question, then I'll really let you go. I'm sorry, I had to do it. It's, it's not every day I get the chance to sit down with you, so I want to... No, I think it's great, and you're doing a really good job co-hosting. Oh, you made you. me feel very, Maybe five, very comfy. Five to ten years from now, they'll pay me for it. <laughs> <laughs> one day. If the market goes well. One day we'll be doing it from your yacht. <laughs> ah, yes. I'm more of a, I'm a land animal. I don't know if I'll... Okay. Maybe, maybe from your yacht. Yeah, yeah, there you go. All right. <laughs> but uh, people who want to get involved in this space, people who are maybe, you know, haven't taken the leap yet, but have a curiosity or even a passion for cannabis, want to get into the space, what advice do you have for them? Uh, the advice I have for people who want to get into the cannabis industry is believe in yourself. You'll find a lane. You'll find a way. Just start. Awesome. All right. Well, that's it for us today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I would say catch you next time on the Business of Cannabis podcast, but I don't know that I will. So <laughs> I will probably come back, but it's all good. No, I like that ending. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Peace. Awesome, dude. And he was never heard from again. <laughs> great job. I think you did it. Thank I you. think, I mean, for a guest host, that sounded awesome. Oh, thanks. Well, yeah. Not my first rodeo, but I appreciate